Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to the first of my card tutorial series for the celebration 2022. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make this utterly awesome card using the awesome Irish stamp set by Stampin' Up. There are a lot of steps to this card, but it's still easy. It's not, it's not in the difficult category, it's just that there are a lot of steps. If you're one of my card club, card club members, you can actually relax for the whole first part of this tutorial because you have a little kit and you don't have to make all of the pieces. But I'd like to, for the benefit of m the world of Crafty Friends, because I, I, my channel is for people all over the world, and I want to start at the very beginning because of that. So if you think it's too easy because you already have your parts, then just go ahead and make some more is what I suggest, right? So you're, you're sitting there, you're chilling out, go grab your stuff and make some more parts so that you can have multiple cards. That's what I did. Look, I've made four cards. I'm going to show you the bottom card because I colored it differently. But at first, when I stamped this, I had done something. I twisted the stamp and I thought that was actually part of the water, but it wasn't. So then I went to go make some more cards and I thought, well, it's easier to make a couple at once. So I'm kind of going to show you that technique too, just sort of my mass production technique. This is one of those stamp sets that you can't, buy but you get for free when you purchase fifty dollars of items at my stampin up store i'll be saying hello to you so keep keep saying hello as you come in and i'm gonna i like to be hyper focused when i start my tutorials because i like to just get right into it and then when i when i could do some stamping i'll take a break and say hello what you're gonna do right now is let me turn my stampin up trimmer around is we're going to prepare all the parts we need for this card Okay, my club members will get a nice PDF. The rest of you are still going to get the measurements. You're just going to get them on my little scrap paper here instead of a PDF. And I'm sorry I'm not done the PDF. And those of you that know me know how much I hate making PDFs compared to making videos. And it's not that I can't do it. I've actually already, I mean, I've already pretty much, pretty much wrote it all. I've been writing it for like a month, but I just didn't put pictures in it yet. And I like to really do a lot with my pictures, so... I have to get, I have to take those pictures, but anyway, it's almost done. So let's, let's start with the, I, I usually start with this basic white. Now, I, when we have, when I talk about basic white, we have two kinds of basic white cardstock. We have the thick basic white and we have the regular basic white. For the inside of the cards, meaning just this part, and you can stamp it if you want. I'm just going to make it plain. You don't need, you don't need the thick basic white. It's a waste. You just need the regular basic white. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it four inches and go ahead. I'm going to, I'm going to flip it around like this and I'm going to make it four inches. And the reason I flip it around is because Stampin' Up! commercially cuts their cardstock. So the edges of the cardstock are straighter. So I always try to make the, I always try to keep their, their outer edge and I flip it around. That's just my own little tip. So I'm going to make it four by five and a quarter. And you see what I mean? I cut there. This is their edge. So I'm already going to, I'm going to flip it around. You don't have to do that. It's just something that my trimmer is a little more wonky than theirs. I mean, they don't have a trimmer. I'm saying they commercially cut it. Looks like something got on that one. That's okay. Cause I'm cutting extras. Okay. So four by five and a quarter. I don't remember if I cut the four already. Let's just compare it. Yes, I did. Okay. Four by five and a quarter. I want their straight edge as much as I can. And then I'm only cutting my little edge. So then save all these little pieces because these are great for stamping later and water coloring and doing layering. So I saved those little scraps. Now, here we have a few pieces already. That same measurement you're gonna use again. So we're gonna just say cardstock equals, we'll do length by length times width, right? Five and a quarter by four and we're going to do this again both kinds of cardstock so now we're going to take some misty moonlight here's the package i took out a few pieces that were sort of bent see look see how sometimes cardstock comes a little bent at the edges it's just and especially stuff that gets shipped to me my boxes get tossed about it's like the people are playing catch with my boxes but see how a couple pieces are bent no big deal those are the kind of pieces i'm going to end up using instead of using them for card bases they're perfect pieces that are bent a little bit because I'm going to be cutting them off a little bit anyway at the edges. They're perfect for using for these embossed layers. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to cut the same 
I'll just go ahead and cut four of these while I'm at it because I already have three of the other parts. So we're so we're gonna now cut this part. We're gonna make that four again by five and a quarter. Same thing. I like to cut that side. Okay, now I'll save these strips again because it is coordinating cardstock after all, so we're gonna save those again. Okay, four by five and a quarter. And then we should just, I always, I always sort of double check them because sometimes I get a space out and I, so I just sort of go like this. Are they all the same? And when one's sticking up or out, I'm like, oops, they're not all the same, right? So we have our little stack. So this is mass production of your cards. You're going to do that. So next you're going to take a piece of uh, basic white. I, I would... I don't mind if you use thick or regular for this. I'm trying. I think I might have used thick, but I'm just. It doesn't matter. Let me see what I used because I wrote it on here. Nope, I used regular. Okay, I wrote it on the back of the packets. So I used basic white cardstock. So what you're going to do now is just lop it in half, very roughly. It's 11 inches across. Just go ahead and cut it. And I'm going to use my dull blade. I have a dull blade for this. See, this is my dull blade. I put a little sticker on it. You don't have to put two blades on your trimmer. It's just that I have a good blade. And then I have a dull blade. Or you could keep your scoring blade on your trimmer. I just keep a dull blade and on the bottom and a sharper blade on the top. Because I'm, you know, for I'm doing paper shares and things like that. Designer shares paper shares so I can use my duller blade to cut that. So now you have a piece of this. And now last, we need the trimmer one more time. Um, well, we need it a couple more times, but we don't, we don't need it just yet. Let's, let's get back to it. Let's do some die cutting. We'll get back to using the trimmer. But you're going to go gather your... You're going to need it for the designer series paper and for the crumb cake. So I'm just gathering the things I need. This is going to be the card base and you're going to need some of your pattern party designer series paper, which we're going to cut. But let's just go ahead and do the embossing first. I'm going to take out the embossing machine. So the, the, the dies we're going to use for this are the stitch rectangle dies. These are an essential part of my craft room. Definitely. I use these all the time. Okay. And I'm starting to use these little cases. So, you know when you go into Home Depot and you, you see the magnetic vent covers? You can use that. And you can use our stamp cases. And it's another way of storing your dies. It's just been helping me a little bit. So, we're going to take we're gonna take this die. And it's this one here. And that's the one we're going to cut a few of. And that's why I had to cut this in half because it, it the way it fits through the machine. All right, so you're probably wondering which which die is it, and it, I'm not going to give you the exact measurements, but it's about it's the one that's about three, three uh, and seven seven five three and three quarters. It's about the one that's three and three quarters wide. So what I'm going to do now is take the machine and let's see what I have. I hope you can see the whole machine. I'm going to put the machine up on my table, and this is the stamp and cut and emboss machine. See, it's this machine. Hopefully I'm not too close to the camera. I should have thought about that when I tested my tripod. I was I was testing it for the trimmer, but I forgot I wasn't testing it for this. Let's see if I can't go up a little higher. Hmm, without making a big mess of my new tripod. Dun 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 dun. I love my new tripod, but it's got to be careful with all these settings because there we go. Okay. It worked. I, I'm figuring it out. So we have our plates. We need plates. And the, the plate we're going to use is for die cutting. We're going to use the basic plate. And, and the plates make a sandwich. So when we talk about sandwich, it means the order in which you put the dies. An order, an order you put the plates on so you can cut the dies, I mean. So the plate one is your base plate. That's your, your base plate that comes with your machine. This, you need plate two because you need your magnetic... I mean, your thin die adapter, this is plate two. It's called, so it'll tell you that you use plate two when you're using thin dies. It even says use with thin dies. This is a thin die. Now you're going to use one plate three. It's, and you're going to use another plate three for the top. Both of my plate threes are really scratched up, but it's okay. So, by, so this is your sandwich, right? That's your sandwich, but of course you need paper. And where do you put the paper? You put the paper 
in your sandwich. So that's why they call it a sandwich. That's like your ham on your sandwich, your cheese, right? And you're going to put your dye in there. And you're going to put your dye face down. Now, do you think I really die cut only one at a time? Oh, heck no. But this is a teaching video. I would never just cut one die at a time. Oops, I forgot to open the back of my machine. So make sure you open the back of your machine, see? You gotta open the back or you, you can't get the, you can't crank it through. There's a little handle here and I'm cranking it through. And so, you hear that little noise, it's okay. Little clicking noise. And now at this point you can, you can test it or you can just, I'm going to, you know, sometimes you test it. Did it come out good? And it did. And you should just be able to pop this one out. But if not, sometimes you can use your take your pick tool. There's a little spatula on this side. So what I do when my dies get stuck, I don't try to push them out because I might rip the edge. Sometimes I just use my little spatula part and I do this. And that's how I get them out without messing them up. So do we love the stitch rectangles or what? You can just cut yourself a rectangle about three and three quarter inch if you need to, times, I mean, if you don't have the stitch rectangle dies and you're following along with my video. So it's about three and three quarters. It's a little bit less than that. Maybe, you know, three and a half or maybe a little over two, a little, maybe two and a quarter, right? It's just give or take. This is not exact science. Just cut yourself a rectangle that's going to hold your, your otter. All right, we're going to do that again because we're stamping. And now you got to see why I pushed it off to the side when I was doing it, right? So that I, I maximized how many I can get on one paper. But I would never just cut one because I have a card club. Later on, I'll show you the projects we're doing in the card club. And, and I have these dies over here on the side because these are the ones I'm using a lot. So like this one I'm using a lot and this one. Or, and that one. So there's three of them. Three of them I'm using. So of course, when I cut, I would, I'd be cutting all those out at once. And sometimes I even cut extras because in the future, I like to just have a, a bucket of crafty goodness and extra things to have. All right, because I already have some cut, like I can also stamp this one if I need to. So I don't need to keep die cutting it. I think you get the idea. So this stitch rectangle though is brilliant because you it's a two for one. If you were to cut this, in some precise way. I just lopped it in half, right? Say we would have cut this, like say, remember how we cut this one earlier? So now imagine if you would have put this in the center with a little piece of tape and you got it centered. Now you have a frame that's stitched. And then you also two for one have this one that we're using for our card. So that's just another card making tip for you. But I don't worry about this paper. This is I'm gonna throw out when I'm done. This is just, I'm not worried about this part of the stitching for now, but that's another way of using these dies. All right, so while we have the machine out, let's talk about the next sandwich. We need to emboss the Misty Moonlight cardstock. So to emboss, you follow the directions on your stamp and cut and emboss machine, plate one. You do not use the thin die adapter, this one. This, you don't use plate two. And you don't need all of these plates either because there is something here. You don't need these plate number threes because when you have a thick embossing folder, it's called a 3D embossing folder, all you need is this and this, this number four. So we're going to do that while we're here because I have the machine out. We're going to do the embossing. And we're going to use the new Hive 3D embossing folder. It's 3D. If you watch my catalog overview, I'm going to do this one more time for the benefit of, I like every video of mine to stand alone. Even though I like to refer you to other videos on YouTube, I like you to be able to understand concepts right now while you're here. And that concept I want to teach you right now is the difference between a regular embossing folder and a 3D embossing folder. If you use the wrong sandwich, you bend your embossing folders. Been there, done that. So I just want to tell you, this is the 3D embossing folder, the Hive one. This is a regular embossing folder. So the sandwich is going to be different. For this embossing folder, all you need is plate one and plate four. If you've tried to use these and you can't crank it through, it's because you were using the wrong sandwich. We're going to put a piece of the Misty Moonlight in here. Lay it in the, in the hive folder, close the, close the folder, make sure you put it hinge first, see, hinge first, and try to get it straight because this is supposed to be water bubbles. I, because I'm doing the reverse, I'm using the reverse and I want this to be like water bubbles. So you kind of get them straight, as opposed to a beehive. When I saw that folder, 
I immediately thought of water bubbles, but I know others are going to think of beehives because that's the name of the folder, hive. Okay, there we go. Okay, here's the, here's the side you would, so this is the Stampin' Up! folder side, right? When you take it out, it looks like a beehive, but when you turn it over, and that's the side we're going to use for our card, it can look like bubbles. If you then add Wink Costello to this and do some shimmer paint or something, lots of fun bubbles. Okay, let's do that again. And let me just do this, because I like to change my angle a little bit. We'll just do that, just for the benefit of everybody. Okay, I like to just show you a different angle. So we're going to put this in. We're going to lay it down. If you care about it being really straight, you may use a little bit of a piece, piece of tape. Okay, so Diana is saying she loves the new splatter embossing folder. I don't have that one yet. I have these two. I have the Chevron and I have the Hive. Those are the two I bought. But I did notice some more when I was when I was doing the catalog walkthrough. I was like, how did I miss new embossing folders and not get them? Because those are usually things I always get right away. But I didn't get them. I didn't get them all. I will eventually. I have to pace myself because I spent a lot of money yesterday. Over $300. Because I was trying to get the Calming Camellia stamp set for free. And your order is $300, you get that one too. So there you go. So let, let's not keep doing that, you get the idea. So that's a way to mass produce though. Just do them all at once. Do every stage of your card at once. So you're not doing, you're not spending a lot of time making one card. Don't spend an hour making one card. If you spend an hour, make. I hope at the end of the hour you have a few cards made so that you maximize your time and effort. So now I'm done with this, but I will be using the trimmer again because we're going to make, make the rest of our card pieces. So we have our, and let's get rid of the embossing folders. Let's get all this out of the way. Oh, but there's the Hive 3D embossing folder. Here, I can show you some product numbers. If you want to get some of these items, there's some product numbers. All right, let's put this over here. Do a little cleaning up here. Now we're going to get our, we're going to make our card base now. We're going to get this crumb cake card, cardstock, I mean, crumb cake cardstock. So I look at my pieces and sometimes I have little bent corners because the way I keep putting them in and out of the cabinet, in and out of the cabinet, I really need to have one of those fancy setups like some of the, some of the ladies I see and even some of my team members, they have the fancy little card stock holders behind them, but I, I really rough house my crafts. All right, so this one is going to be, this is the card, crumb cake card stock. So let's not cut it yet because we need to score it. And when we score it, we can get two cards done at once. Of course, your trimmer may have a scoring piece on it, but I don't like to use, I don't like to score with the trimmer because I use it for my cutting and I have two blades on it already. So I don't like to add the, the scoring blade too because it gets in the way. So I like to score with what's called the Simply Scored Tool. This is one I always recommend if you're getting a starter kit to put in your starter kit. I'm going to I'm gonna put it horizontally 11 inches. So you, it's 11 inches wide, right? Then I'm going to score it in the middle. I'll write this down for you. So I'm scoring it five and a half. Why? Because then I can get two cards done at once. Now I'm going to put my trimmer here. I'm going to turn the paper. See that score line? I'm turning the paper so that the paper is now... The eight and a half by eleven part is on top now, not the not the eleven inches. It's eight and a half, so it's now in a portrait orientation instead of landscape. And we're going to go to five and a half. I'm sorry, not five and a half. Yikes! No, no, no. Four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Because this is a vertical card. Oops! I should have put the blade at the top of the bottom. I shouldn't have just dropped it in the middle of the card. Because sometimes if you drop the blade in the middle of the card, you get a little speck there. But hey, it did a pretty good job. Because I did put a new blade right before this tutorial. And there we have it. Two cards at once. And do that. Rinse and repeat. Make lots of cards at once. Don't just make one. So now that we have our card scored and cut, we're going to write down that. Now you need to know that measurement. Let me find my pen. Okay. Both, both of these pieces of cardstock are five and a quarter by four. So the card itself, card base, we're going to say card base, is 11 inches by four and a quarter. It is an A2 card. That's what we call an A2 card. But A2 cards could be, they can open this way. We're, we're making ours open this way because it's so cute. 
like it's cute vertically. But we could also make a card open this way. We would just have to, we'd have to do the opposite to the measurements, but we would still be called an A2 card because it has to do with the outer dimensions of your card. Now I like to use, I like to flip that over. I score it down. I like to flip that over and just make the score line, like, I mean, make this butt up against my scoring tool. And I, because this, I like this little ledge. And then I get my little bone folder. Okay, and you can just sort of crease the edge. Or a spatula. You guys can use your skin and cut spatula to flatten out this. Okay, and then we're going to just do that again. So that's it for the card base. Now we have those made. Let's adhere those, and then we'll get back to the designer series paper. So we're going to adhere those with your, with your seal plus. Don't adhere the inside quite yet, because we can do the outside. We don't want to do the inside yet, because what if we decide to stamp the inside? What if it's someone's birthday? Then you're going to want to put, it's your birthday, because that's one of the stamps. Or it's party time, or it's birthday time, I think. There's like a, there's a stamp that says something about birthday, so you can put something on the inside. This is Seal Plus. I love Seal Plus. It's very strong. We're going we're gonna to put this on the outside of the card. The misty moonlight bubbles. All right, so you might be wondering, where is she coming up with misty moonlight? Aren't there better colors for water? Yes, but I wanted to use my Pattern Party Designer Series paper, and I knew that misty moonlight was one of the colors in this paper. So it coordinated, so that's why I chose Misty Moonlight. So whenever you're choosing your colors, don't do it just by eyeballing it. Try to use Stampin' Up! coordinating colors. Okay, this is very strong adhesive, so you're, you sometimes get stuck on there. And then, don't try to pull that up because you could get a big hole in your card. Just trim it off. Trim, trim. Right? Trim it off and then grab... Use your adhesive because it sometimes comes un, undone. I got it back on the roller. What you're going to do is you're going to touch, touch to the other line, right, so that you can. it has something to grab onto. So whenever I get little paper curled up like that, I sort of touch it, the adhesive to that little piece there. And we flip it over, and we're making this card too. All right, so now let's go cut the piece of... basic or a pattern party. All right, so we have our, we're, this is going to be our piece of DSP. DSP. And I will have to use my cheat sheets that I'm going to be sending out. So four by two and five eighths. I came up with that because I wanted it to have a big enough margin for this rectangle to be on the outside. You know, so you can see the rectangle. All right, so to get this, so you're going to look at your piece of, this is the piece of Pattern Party we're going to use. Pattern Party is a fantastic pack of paper that when you have an order of $150 or more, you, you're able to get host rewards, and you can use this for your host rewards, this, this whole pack of paper. You can use your rewards, I mean, to get this pack of paper. 48 sheets in a pack, super fantastic paper. There's not that many of each sheet. There's like four of each sheet. But I happen to, um, what I do is I share some of these in some of my kits. These are ones I'm saving for my rainbow. I think, I think I'm saving this for my rainbow of happiness kit. That's why I have so many. So don't think you're, like if you see me with like eight sheets of the same paper, it's because I combine two packs together. You really get four of each sheet. All right, so let's do this. Let's take, since we're going to have the two and five eighths side be this side. See, these are like little bubbles, I thought, or like, not bubbles, but little humps. I like these little humps. So I want the pattern to go this way. So you see how I'm going to cut the 2 and 5 eighths side first, the long side. 2, so you go 2 and a half is 4 eighths, right? So 5 eighths is another two little smidgens because this, this trimmer, it goes by 16ths of an inch. Okay, so you can go ahead and cut more than, you can cut more than one at the same time. Probably you get away with three pieces of paper if your blade is sharp. At the same time, four, three pieces of designer series paper, not cardstock, but designer series paper. But this is four inches, so you get three of these in a row, and so you get lots of these out of one sheet. So cut a bunch of these, 
And let's make sure, just always get your sample card and kind of go by, okay, is that the right size? And it is. So we have them done. So now we're ready for stamping, blending, and we're, that's why we're not going to put the inside yet because we might stamp on the inside. Let's see whatever floats our boat if we want to stamp on the inside. But let's first do the little otter because we need the otter to be done so it starts to dry a little bit before we start blending it with the stamping blends. So I'm going to stamp with Memento Black ink, and I wasn't sure which stamp I needed. So I brought my big stamping block out. I was thinking I might need stamping block E. So I think this otter's pretty long. I think the tail hung off when I tried to do it on this. We're going to see though right now. So let's see. Nope, it's fine. So this, let's just use the smaller block if we can because I want most of you are going to have this block. So it's stamping block D and it's fine. So I don't need a larger stamping block. Stamping block D is fine. So to really mount your stamp, to, to actually mount your stamp, you should put your stamp down onto your mat and tilt your stamping block D and then push down on it. So now it's very nice and flat, right? And then you can get out your silicone mat. Let me grab that. I had to detach for a second. Detach from the mothership. There's a piece of lint on there. And I'm going to now use the silicone mat to do the stamping on. So we're gonna, before we stamp onto our nice, beautiful rectangle, you always wanna stamp onto your, your little piece of scrap paper first. And I wasn't sure which, one, which of these had ink on them. And rather than me try to re-ink them, okay, that's the one that's dull. See, I guess that's why I had the tape on it. Sometimes you don't, you don't know whether you put tape on something because it was your dull one, or you put tape on something because it's the one you use more. Right, so you can't remember why you put tape on something sometimes. But anyway, that's my dull one. This must be the one that is not dull. Okay, it's better. Not, it's, not, it's not great, but it's better. I just probably need to re-ink it, but you don't want to re-ink it right before you're about to color because then you end up with a lot of extra blobs of ink in the places you don't want. Okay, so I, once you get the otter to be good, the, like a good, a good crisp image of the otter, then you're going to stamp it, moving the tail down as low as you can because you need room for the sentiment. Okay, so put the tail down as much as you can. I mean, as close to the bottom as you can, leaving room up here for your sentiment. Oh, my otter came out good. Like I said earlier, when I first made this card as my sample, I wobbled the stamp. So let's wobble the stamp in case you want this effect. I'm not going to wobble it on my actual card, but check this out. If you wobble the stamp like that, see, you can get yourself an extra line of water. And it kind of looks cool like it's supposed to be there, but it's not actually there. So I took it. So that's why I ended up creating some more cards. So let's go ahead and put... Let's stamp another one. I'm just tapping onto the memento black. I'm stamping another otter while I'm here. And I don't need to do another one because I was thinking if I mess up, I had extras in my little bag of crafty goodness. But I'm saving these so I don't need to use them. So we have two. So that's good. Now we still need to keep our black out because we're going to do our sentiment now. So let's go ahead and do our sentiment. You are utterly awesome. Okay, so we're going to put the sentiment straight up like that. And we're going to put the stamping, up, stamping block on there. And then we're going to tap onto there. You're utterly awesome. You're utterly awesome. Good. See, get a good crisp image on your scrap paper and then hold both hands on the ledge. If you're not getting good images and you're stamping, you're not using good stamping blocks. Like these are really thick and really stable. Maybe you're using the thinner ones. Or maybe your stamping block's wonky or you're not using the right size stamping block. Give yourself room to like get a stable image. Okay, that one, as I just said it, it messed up my image. Not messed up, but it put a big blob in the middle, which is no big deal. We do not fret about things like that. Okay, I'm just going to make one more though because I think I want to make one more. Okay. Little, there's a little too much ink, so I'm going to not hold it for as long. Ah, that's better. And we'll do another otter. And what do I do with my extra otter? I just cover it up with another little thing in there. So now, if you want to do something for the inside, here, let's keep this out. And let's do something. I didn't do anything for the inside, but let's just say you wanted to. Maybe what would be cute is... This little guy might be cute on the inside. I'm just going to do it on one of them to give you an idea. So put your stamp down, stamp down, tap, tap, tap. It's a little blurry. 
Let's put this over here. Let's put this over here. Oh man, that's very blurry. Okay, because I'm probably not on the mat, but I still, it shouldn't be blurry. That's better. I mean, when you get on the mat, it's less blurry. So anyway, th this is a vertical card, so you could do something like this. Okay, for the inside of your card. So just giving you an idea. If it's someone's birthday, put a little party hat on that guy. I'm not putting a party hat on him because I'm not going to use this as a birthday card. I'm doing it already awesome. But if you want, you could write it's birthday time right there and put the little party hat on him. And one little trick for that is you could mask off. If you want, if you want to make sure the party hat doesn't like overlap, you can sort of do this. Like just make sure, you know, you could just do that. I mean, then the party hat will land in the right spot, right? So you could, you could stamp the party hat without accidentally putting the party hat on its head. All right, so that's good. Now we're good, now we're good, now we're ready to, I'm gonna say hi while it's drying, because now we're gonna color with the Stampin' Blends, and I'll get out the Stampin' Blends that we're gonna use. We're going to make this little creation here. I'm gonna show you how to blend the edges, how to use the Stampin' Blends to color the otter, and to me, this is the most fun part, I think of the whole card making process, but I wanted to go through every step with you. So hello, Donna, Joe, and Diana, and Gloria, and Nola, and Kathy, and Donna, and Eileen, and Carol, and Frida, and Vicki. Wow, lots of you guys came in today. Yvette, Tracy, Anne, and Diana, and you guys are conversing. I like it. Yeah, so Yvonne's saying unless she's making a specific card for someone, she waits and does the sentiments later. Yes. And hello, Donna and Terry. All right, cool. So we are ready for some coloring. We're going to take our dark and light Stampin' Blends, a little bit of pool party. Then we'll do the fish. With a little, couple of little pinks, we'll do some fish. A little bit with the fish. All right, so let's do the darkest color first. We're going to use the light and dark Stampin' Blends. I'm going to do one slow, and then I'm going to do one. So let me zoom in. What I do for this is I do one slow when I'm teaching you how to color, and then I do one fast, like at the actual pace I'll do it. So first slow as I'm teaching you, and then watch how I do it fast. Now, I'm not, I can't do them together, though, because the ink could dry. These are alcohol markers. Alcohol markers tend to dry quickly, and you want to blend the two colors together, so you can't blend them together if I do two cards at once. So I'm just gonna go around the outside, do the ear a little bit, and I'm gonna make another little thing right like that. Another little line, I'm gonna get his little hands, or are they little paws? Get in there. Okay, so I'm doing dark first. Okay, good, we got it. Now we're gonna do the light before it dries. So get the light. I'm using the thin side. Each one of these has a thin side and a thick side. I find it's easier to do circular motions when I'm blending, and then I'm gonna go use the, I'll use the brush side to go over the whole thing. But right now I'm just trying to get in there real quick so that it doesn't dry. Okay, so far so good. Now we're gonna take the brush side See, it looks better when it's, here, let's, let's look over here. See, it looks better when it's dry and it's more smooth. I'm going to use the brush side now. And now you can sort of pull the color in. See, pull with the brush, the brush side, I'm going to pull the color in from the sides. I was using the thin side just to get it done real quick to, before it dried. So now I can sort of do the circular motions again, but I'm also sort of, you can either use circles or strokes to sort of pull the side darker color into the middle. Okay, that's the otter, and now I'm going to take the whole middle, do, 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 see that? So, super quick to do the middle. I'm just putting the whole belly in light crumb cake. So your dark color always goes first, then your light crumb cake. Now let's do, let's let that dry. If we need to fix it, we can. And let's do the fish, the water, and some other things. So I think I did the dark. Let's see. No, I might have done the light. I thought I did the dark, but it was the light. So I'm going to take the light pool party and sort of just do that. So that's all I did for the water. Very easy. We'll do some more inking, but that's all I did. I don't think I needed this one except for maybe the eyes. I think I just used the dark pool party for the eyes. All right. So now we're going to take a little bit of pink 
and a little bit of so saffron. So I, I made the nose pink, petal pink, only because petal pink's one of the colors for the that coordinates. So is so saffron. It coordinates with this part with this pattern party design series paper. So now I just color the fish with a little bit of I think I I tried to use I think this was running out. So what I did, I did, yeah, this is running out. So I would have normally used the dark so saffron. The problem is it was running out. So that's why my fish was more pink. So I think I ended up using the dark. Yeah, I'm going to use the dark petal pink. I'm not even blending the fish. It's too small. I was just giving them a little bit of a yellow head, though, just something a little different. So I'm using petal pink, same thing I used for the nose. And we're going to just use a little bit. I'm just going to use a marker for the but only I'm only using this marker, not because I would normally just use the blends for the whole fish. But I'm only using the marker, just so you know, is because I these have dried out. I ordered more yesterday. That was part of my wish list. All right, now we'll blend the edges in a minute. But I hope you understand how I did that. I'm going to do it again. I'm just zooming out for a little bit of a different angle. Let's let's put one over here. Let's put one over there, so you can see them. And I'm just going to color again faster, the way I would actually color. And so what you might want to do is assembly line process. So you might want to do something like, I didn't have to do the, I didn't, I do have to do the dark crumb cake first, but I could do like the noses, all the noses, right? Maybe all the, the inside, like I could do all the pink parts, right? Okay, my fish is going to be pink, right? So I do the fish, look like a little pink salmon, right? And little, I do the fish first maybe. And then I could do all the blue parts. The, the pool party or all the so saffron parts. So you could do an assembly line process when you color. It's usually what I do. Do, 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 a little bit of water. Dark pool party for the eyes. Do, do, do. Okay, the eyes are a little too big on that one. All right, so now everything's colored, but now that now we got to just have to do the otters. So let's move the otters over here, and we will get the dark crumb cake. If you mess up something, there's a color lifter, and you can lift some color off. So. I hope you know somebody that can use this card for encouragement. I just think it's going to make anybody smile. And the light crumb cake. Doo -doo -doo. I'm actually just going right for the brush side. I did the thin side earlier, but I'm just going to go be daring and do the brush side. But I'm going to do it twice. Okay, so twice to get rid of the streaks. And you can watch already how this one is looking better just in those couple minutes. It's blending. But I still see a little bit of harshness over there. So you can always go back and fix the other ones. Okay. And the inside. And you can do this while you're watching TV. So get everything ready. Always have parts... Like, always have crafting projects that you can do while you're doing other things. So, like, you know, if you're wrapping ribbon or if you're gluing ribbon onto something, you know, get yourself, cut all the pieces first and then wrap them later. I don't know why that one side's doing that. So you can get a lot done at once. I can't help myself. I had to color another one. I know you guys already know how to do it, but I am not going to take all the stuff out again later. I want to have these done. I'm going to give away everything but one of them. Save one of them. Okay, I do have a little bit too dark there. There's no use making cards if you're not going to send them or give them away. Maybe your mail carrier, they worked really hard this holiday season, bringing you your little boxes of stuff. Crafty goodness. They're utterly awesome. 
that head's going to be really dark because I, I accidentally went real dark on the head over there. Do, 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 in the middle. Get the middle. All right, so now we're ready to do the blending brush part. And I can always go back through and sort of catch these. If, and whenever you get streaks and, and sections, you kind of want little light and dark sections. That's what's cool about the blends, but you don't want like streaks. So this one's good. It's dry and you can see how it's blended nice, but they do get like streaky if you don't keep going over them. But you can only go over them while they're wet. So if it's too late, I mean, if it's been sitting too long, like that one's, that one's good. I like this one, but I'll show you the color lifter. All right, so that's, and this one's pretty good. So I would say this, I, I went outside the lines. If you ever go outside the lines, it's not a big deal, but there is something called a color lifter. And don't think of it as, you can think of it as an eraser, but don't think it's actually gonna work like an eraser. It, it's technically an eraser, but really you have to rub and then it, like nothing happens and you're like, what in the world? Then you rub again and nothing happens. And then all of a sudden it'll just sort of make your ink get lighter, but not quite disappear. It just makes it get lighter. So then you wait. So you kind of have to wait. When you do the color lifter, you have to wait because you're like, hmm, nothing happened. If you do it too much, you'll get like a hole in your card because you'll be like, why is nothing happening? All right, so let's do the blending of the edges and then we'll put the card together and we're done. So let's take all these markers. We're done with all this. Except I see a little... I see my little fish is not really complete. Oh, you know what happens is I get brown. The brown runs into the fish. So you have to go back over it with pink. All right, good. Let's get the blending brush. So let's see if there's anything on this blending brush. Nothing. So I just use, so you have basically your blending brushes and you can use them over and over again. And I just have some that I use for blues and some I use for greens. And just to clean them off, you just sort of rub them on something. And then of course, wash them too with Dawn dishwashing detergent is fine. Well, that's what I do. I don't know what they recommend. I just use, I just use warm water and soap and they wash them off. So now, so we're gonna ink around the edges of these and we're gonna put some ink, we're gonna take some pool party ink. Why pool party? Because it's a coordinating color. So is Misty Moonlight, but Misty Moonlight's too dark. So you wouldn't wanna ink around it with Misty Moonlight. So I'm gonna open up the pool party and I'm gonna take this little otter off here, Otter D Awesome, and just use the stamping block for this demo. And I'm gonna put some ink on the stamping block and then put some ink on my blending brush. And I'm gonna touch it to the mat, you see how a big blob comes off at first? So you don't want that big blob to go on the edge of your card. You want the big blob to go on the mat. So there you go, and that's how you ink the edges. I'm gonna show you the before and after. Look at the difference between when you ink around the edges and you don't ink around the edges. It just adds, adds so much more dimension to your cards. So again, put some ink, get rid of that first blob, and then ink around the edges. And you can do this all around, or you can do it around you can do it down the side too if you want, but I just, especially the edges. Okay, and you might have to get another. I think I got it all with one blob or one. I think that's good. Yep, I'm happy with that. Before and after. So we'll save that for a moment and we'll do one more. Actually, I'll just do two more because, because I'm here and I don't want to have to do it again later. Do, do, do. I'm going to go down like that and then around the edge. I'm just doing it faster. This is the way I would actually do it. And you get exercise when you're crafting. See, not only does it make us feel good because we're sparking our creativity, but crafting is also exercise. Okay, pretty good. I like that my new tripod does not make my whole table shake because it's not touching my table anymore. If it is still shaking, it's because my whole room's shaking. All right, there we go. So we're done. Now I want to show you what happened when I... Love this little otter, Yvonne saying. Yep, it's good. I'm glad you have it as part of your collection. I have meerkats and otters and all kinds of cuteness in our collection. So let's put... Let's put this little otter in the inside. Let's put, oh, where's, 
Oh, we haven't done a card yet. I'm like, where's my card? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this one on the inside, because I'm not gonna color the inside. You can if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that one on the inside because he's so cute. But you, I mean, you could color him. No big deal. But I feel like it's just cute the way it is for the inside. Maybe just color a few water drops or whatever if you want. Okay, so then we, now for the outside, we're going to put this piece down with just regular, I just do regular adhesive for that one, and then I'm going to pop up this little guy with dimensionals. So I'm putting a little bit of adhesive, seal plus on there. I'm making my bubbles, not bubbles, but my little humps go up like that. So they're facing up, and then I'm going to use dimensionals for this part. The big ones. Hi Rose, Happy New Year. When you, you can see that the stamping blends do bleed through. The regular basic white, but not this, not this, not the other basic white. Just the regular basic white. Not the thick basic white, they don't usually bleed through. Okay, just making sure all my dimensionals are on there and pop that up. And voila! And then one more finishing touch is if you want, I didn't do this and it's not in my tutorial, but you could take your whole Wink Estella and go all around. Either your otter, you can put Wink Estella on your otter, make him cute and glossy if you want. I mean, this, this Wink Estella is pretty, pretty dull, but it, it gives it a little bit of, you know, I, I, I have ones with more glitter in it. Glitter pen, a little bit of bling if you want. So that's how you do it. I'm gonna put this one together real quick. Do, do, do. Okay, I'm going to show you the rest of the otter projects I have, how I did another background like that, and, oh, I should have attached. It's hard to put adhesive on something once there's dimensionals on it because there's all these little bumps up and down, so I should have put the adhesive on it first, right? And then you can attach the dimensional one because, let's just grab this card, right? I like this embossing folder because it's already, there's already like lines that it help me see where to put things. And this one needs one of our basic whites. Remember the basic whites we cut at the very beginning of this tutorial when I was cutting your basic white cardstock. I'm making this blank inside like, like Yvonne said because she's not sure what the sentiments are going to be yet. There's the back of one of my dimensionals to hitchhiking a ride. Hitchhiking a ride on there. So of course you can stamp the inside. You don't have to. You have choices like it's birthday time and and um, and anything from another maybe another set. Voila, voila, voila. Easy peasy. And look how many we got done. So it wasn't just oh you know the tutorial takes a while, right? But I told you it still wasn't hard. It's just time consuming. But Look how many we got done. We probably could have got four done. We got three done. We just did, well, we did, we, we colored three. Okay, we got, we, we would have had three done in the same amount of time because I colored three. This one's ready as well. Okay, now I wanted to show you a few things. I'm going to show you some more Otter projects and the rest of the Card Club projects. So this one is one where I went to town. I put, I, I did the whole thing in pool party. I think that came out good. But I don't think you need it, but it just came out like, it made it look more like water. And for this, I just did lots more blending. Lots, I just kept doing, I, I kind of masked over this to keep him from getting too much ink on him. And I just kept on doing the blending brush. So that's just, that's just another variation. And then this, these are some other projects with the otters. So I want to show you. This, you're otterly awesome. This is one of our new treat boxes. And this is also Pattern Party Designer Series paper. So I showed this tutorial on YouTube. And the tutorial was called Cutting Out Stamped Images with Your Scan and Cut. And in that tutorial, I showed you how to cut out these with your scan and cut. So unlike what we did today, where you just put them on a rectangle and that's fine, I showed you how to put the stamp onto a shape or how to cut out the stamped image altogether like it is here as its own little embellishment. And then how to layer the shapes as well. So this is Pattern Party Designer Series paper and so is this. And these are similar to the ones we made in that tutorial on YouTube. And this is Petal Pink cardstock and this is basic black cardstock with some crumb cake layers. 
Okay, and this is a little birthday card, and this one's not. And then this one is the new Rainbow and Sunshine and Rainbows Designer Series paper, which also features the Pool Party color in a different pattern. So this is Pool Party, and that's Pool Party. So this is another thing that I covered in that tutorial. So those are some examples of what you can do with the awesome otters. And these otters, I did the whole celebration walkthrough earlier. So definitely check that out on YouTube. These are all things you can get for free when you spend $50 at my Stampin' Up! store. And you need the, I can't send you stamped images, so your stamping card club is not going to include any stamped images. I'm not allowed to send them to you, but I do send you the pieces to make the five card projects and one extra bonus project with the box. And I've cut out all those pieces for you and everything's labeled and in the bags and you even get a couple embellishments and a little bit of ribbon and you get to make all these projects with everything cut out for you. So this tutorial would have been super easy peasy for you because you would have had all the parts and you could have just been like drinking a glass of wine and adhering it all at the end, right? That would have been easier for you because we did everything from start to finish. But that's where you get this for free from our celebration up until February 28th. All right, before I show you the other projects, I must give a shout out to Sue, my team member who sent me some super cute otters in the snow stamps, which were just released by the US Postal Service. So isn't it cute to put an otter card in the envelope with an otter stamp? I think that's what's gonna be happening with me soon with these otter cards. Be sending them out with these stamps. All right. Celebration Card Club, here's what we're making. I'm, I'm featuring something from this brochure in this club. Um, the, the thing I'll be featuring next is one of these cards. I'm not sure which one. I'm, I guess which holiday comes first is the one I'll do first. I guess, does Mother's Day become before Easter? That's in April, or is it in May? Easter's in April. I might do it like that. Anyway, just the thought. So this is, this is the card we'll be making in the Celebration Card Club, which features the new Daffodil Afternoon free designer series paper by Stampin' Up. And this one features the Daffodil Afternoon designer series paper. And I just use different punches for each of these. I won't be doing it for another couple weeks or so because I want um, people to get their card club. I mean, some, some of you ordered card club a while ago, but m most of you just ordered it. So I want to make sure I give you time to get it. This is featuring the new Sunshine and Rainbows designer series paper. And as you notice, there's that stitch rectangle again. I'm focusing on the stitch, um, the stitch rectangle. I don't expect you to have these dies. I actually can die cut, I mean not can, I did die cut this piece for you so that you can make your rainbow. But you do have to have your own stamp set. I can't send you a stamp, you make me happy, but you might have another stamp set that might go coordinate with that. And then another thing we're making in Card Club, and when I say Card Club, it's during these celebration tutorials, it's on YouTube but I will send you a PDF if you're in the card club. And I'm making this one. It's featuring the hello, friendly hello. This one, free when you spend $100. You get this designer series paper and the stamp set. And because of that, I wanted to use it twice. I used the paper and the hello friend here for this card and some new embellishments, which I'll include. I give you an extra couple embellishments, a couple different sizes in case you want to bling out your cards. And then what I did is I used that sentiment again for our little bonus project, which we'll just put together quickly during that same, we'll probably do it during the same tutorial, maybe a separate tutorial, but probably during the same one, you have my love and support. That is this right here. That is from the same stamp set. So I made two projects with that stamp set, a project with the Sunshine and Rainbows Designer Series paper, two projects with Daffodil Afternoon, and one with Awesome Otters. And that way I get to give you a, a celebration overview of the products and how to use them. They were the products I was allowed to pre-order. I wasn't able to get other products earlier, so I didn't include the, any of these other things in the card club. But later, I might include them in my, in my series though, of my video series on tutorials when I do get the stamp sets. They're just not gonna be part of the club. Let me see if there are any questions, and then we shall let you go make some cards. So Rose, Oh yes, we got to definitely put him on a wobble spring. Mr. Otter needs to go on a wobble spring. That's the wobble, the mini wobble spring. He'll fit on a mini wobble spring and definitely have to make him wobble, especially for the boxes and stuff. Definitely. He's so cute. All, all little critters need to go on wobble springs. Okay, Jeanne likes the coloring. Thank you. 
Patty has this set too, or loves this set. Oh boy, lots of you guys having winter storms. My heart goes out to anybody that's having winter storms right now. I don't like the cold. I don't like to, I don't really like the snow. I just like the way it looks, but I don't like the way it feels. All right, so all of those come in in one card club. Yes, yes, Rose. And it was in my newsletter. Or if it's not, it's because I didn't send my newsletter yet and I might have spaced out. But I did send, I sent this out somehow. I know some people signed up for it, so I sent it out. Whether I send it in my newsletter or I can send it out again. Or I'll, I'll put it in the description of this video. How about that? The uh, how to sign up for card club. I think it was in my newsletter though. So if you don't have my newsletter, just maybe that would be easier. Just write me, go to this website, click contact me, and then you can just ask for my newsletter and then you won't have to like say, oh, I need the link for the celebration club. I need the link for the paper share, the designer series paper share. I need the link for the rainbows and sunshine card club and this kit and that kit because it, it will like probably make me crazy trying to send out separate emails every time and separate links every time when I have it all in the newsletter. So I'll probably refer you to the newsletter and say, hey, all the links are in the newsletter because it would be easier. That's why I try to make those because it's it's like kind of one stop everything in one place. Anyway, there are the measurements. I'm heading out and that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef. Thank you for coming today.